Hey all, Toves here. It's Friday, so I'm back playing some more Planet Zoo. Uh, we're back inside the dome, continuing this project based on the, the tropical dome in uh, Parc Zoologique in Paris. So this episode, um, it's a whole bunch of things kind of going on actually. Not massive progress, but um, kind of lots of little detailing bits and adding some um, Avery's in which you'll probably have seen in that little cinematic at the beginning so um, two parts of this episode really um, as usual as I've done in the last couple so there's a little speed bit here for about 15 minutes um, and then the end of the video will be kind of a bit of a walkthrough so there's a bunch of things that I've added in either just didn't record them or just kind of cut them out because the speed build was too long. So there's lots of little detail bits that I'll kind of show you um, at the end of the video. So hang around for that as well. Um, and if also there's someone that um, has commented on the previous videos asking about how I did the, the kind of wave um, shaped wall in, I think in the first episode, maybe in the last episode as well. Um, you can just sort of see it in the background there actually then hang around for the right at the end of the video because I'll be just doing a little kind of bonus footage bit where I take you through how to do that so um, yeah first thing we were doing here is just replacing the the side wall of this um, capuchin monkey capuchin monkey habitat I don't know why I struggle to say that so much um, yeah so we replaced this side wall and we're adding this um, second door in because uh you know it sort of occurred to me that even though they can't the keepers can't use this this um or can't access this section of the habitat uh that it kind of made sense that there was a another door here so um just building this kind of little very basic almost kind of lean-to structure that's like a um what do you call this like an airlock door so that obviously that's quite important that you never have a single door leading in and out of an enclosure or a habitat because obviously the animal can be waiting right behind the door and um, so yeah just adding a little uh, kind of key card thing here that's what those are supposed to be a um, little fake key card thing you'll notice actually quite a lot I haven't really mentioned this before but you quite a lot of the footage where you see the path railing in and um, I'm doing that I'm switching that on and off all the time actually just to kind of remind me where the path is because I've got this fake floor the path never actually shows and so I'm trying to make sure that I avoid having people walking through stuff and um, this was kind of a fun little idea so I just played around this is supposed to be a bit more like a little um almost like a kiddie area but I actually thought this looked kind of old-fashioned with this uh almost like this sort of collage hidden behind um, this uh, slatted wood effect. So I thought it came out quite well, quite liked it, quite, I thought it was just a little bit of interest. Um, adding some little steps in um, so that kids can come up and peek through these uh, little square holes. Um, I'm probably going to have maybe one more wall design but I'm trying to make sure that the whole, um, whole dome has kind of a um, sort of thematic connection so We'll obviously be reusing the wave shaped window and there's probably square windows again. This is going to look a bit weird. So this was um, kind of playing around with this idea that there would be some like interactive stuff inside the dome. Obviously the peeps in the game won't really interact with this, but um, this will make sense when you see what I'm doing. But I thought it would be quite cool to add some, you know, some of those sort of extra levels of education that you do actually see in Zoo. So this ends up being like a little, um, you know, it's a little thing that's like, can you jump further than a monkey? So monkeys, these capuchin, capuchin monkeys can, or capuchin monkeys can jump, um, apparently uh, Wikipedia says they can jump like two metres or something, or four metres, I can't remember what it is, I'll put it in in a minute. Um, so this is like a little game that kids can play so you stand in the middle and then you jump uh outwards uh and so i'm putting all these kind of these markers out you'll see in a minute when it comes together or you'll see it definitely at least at the end in the in the interactive bit so this was a bit of a, a 
bit heavy on the piece count to be honest but i thought it came out quite well um and i yeah want to kind of make sure i add a lot of these little bits because otherwise you end up with kind of um yeah the path areas can be and the floor itself can be quite uh yeah quite sort of boring and plain um there's our, our, our uh angry angry archer there for for reference so it's like jump away um, going back to the waterway stuff because I'm going to start working in the water potentially in the next episode. I think we're going to add the um, another animal in the next episode, probably the tapir, um, however you say that, uh, into this first section of the pool. So this is me adding some drainage. Um, if you saw the last episode, you'll have seen that I didn't. I couldn't well, remove the water but i've managed to fix that sometimes you have to box the animals it seems um so I've, if you're using the if you're using the blueprint and um, that'll be why you can't remove the water um so adding some steps in again just sort of trying to make it sure it's realistic feels realistic so because this is all one great big um you know concrete water tank effectively uh they would in reality drain this tank so you, you'll probably have just seen that deal this is me adding some some kind of um you know the idea of there being some drains and there's a pipes and stuff here and bits and pieces but this is kind of a combination of me adding what would be drains but also like a filtration system in as well uh, pretty simple i don't i don't go too much into it's just a just a sort of gesture of it really um so that steps down to allow the keepers to get inside um, and obviously to clean and scrub out well that sort of stuff that they'd actually have to do um this is a cool thing i've sort of i think i saw this in a screenshot that someone had done um but if you you'll see if you color the floor that looks quite strong but when you put the water over it and then you can adjust the floor oh, this is random i just caught this bit of footage with a with my <laughs> It's, the monkey's having a problem um, and, and yeah doing a little bit more pooing than you'd expect not sure what the keepers are feeding them I was just starting to put in a bit of a rail round um, this mulch actually all, get, all gets removed um, by the end but yeah trying to trim off the edge of the uh, that, that first water section because as I said that's going to be it's going to have animals in it very soon Um need some need some foliage and that sort of thing i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to do um planters and things in the water but i want to make sure they don't look like they're just kind of sitting on top of the concrete so we'll have to work out how we're doing that so this was pretty simple um i obviously ended up with because i had those posts sunk uh i didn't and i have the my little filtration grid below this i didn't want those posts kind of poking through so just kind of golden rule of of doing this stuff i think is if you've got a problem try and almost like make your way make a, a creative way around it to make it look like it's almost deliberately different so yeah then we had in a um second secondary kind of railing system which you see often in in zoos that um see a few something drops over or you drop a, <laughs> you drop a child over the top of that first barrier they don't end up in the water um, so now we're moving on to the aviaries so this is kind of a, the, the, the couple of reasons why i did this is that my my light source so the sun actually comes up um to the left of the screen or to you know through the glass there uh, and goes over the top of the dome um and i don't want to cast too much shadow over everything in the dome so i was trying to make sure that i've um kept the trees down to a low level on this side uh and also made sure that there wasn't anything yeah you know, too big here like rock work and things so this is all deliberately and they, they're actually they do have quite a lot of these cages um or these I'm not sure if they're aviaries but i think they're just cages for animals inside the inside the real dome um in paris uh so we yeah we just add these raised beds in just to just to uh build it up a bit and give it a bit more interest so mulching this all out as the floor 
I've gone round again with the rock work, so that's going to continue. Um, building a bit of a fake tree, so this is one of the dead, um, dead woods, and then the arrow wood bushes. They work really well on top of the top of these as kind of foliage. I have to say, I, I sort of um, the the shapes that you see in um, the inspiration photos that I've used uh, from the from the Paris Zoo all have these kind of weird, janky, um, shaped uh, aviaries and enclosures. So it was a major pain in the backside to, be <laughs> to put a roof on this. It took me a long time and there's only a very small amount of footage of it because I think it was getting a bit frustrating and it just got a bit boring to watch in the, in the speed build. Um, but I think it came out all right in the end, quite happy with the fact that it came out all right. Also allowed me to put in a few larger trees without making the whole structure big so you'll see the bits where I've got large trees is where there's like peaks and stuff um, adding some bits of lighting in and things uh, you see a few saves actually because I did have a few crashes in this episode um, there's loads of these ambient speakers all through the dome one of the things you'll notice hopefully you'll notice when we get to the real time footage at the end um, it's just the sounds like the sounds are so cool I've got this all set in fact, actually, I've got them all under the floor as well because they have quite a small radius. Um, quite funny when I'm, I posted these education boards in one of the Discord servers um, that I'm a member of, Planet Zoo, uh, someone immediately went, you know, they're upside down, don't you? I was like, yeah, I know they're upside down. They've also got snakes on them, but I kind of wanted them to be that way. You can't, I kind of prefer these. Like, the, the TV screens are so big. Um... So I just kind of went for the, you know, the aesthetic rather than the, the real of it. The guests don't really seem to interact with them very much anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so you're giving the keeper some access now. So just adding in little kind of uh, backstage concrete area using my angry archer as um, size reference to make sure the steps are right. Kind of key to keep using that guy actually. Um, he's the same if you didn't if you haven't seen this piece he's the same size as a keeper or a guest so um, that's why it's really useful and obviously you can place him wherever you want to without the need to be a path or anything so yeah this is a bit of a I mean this is a little bit of a leap of faith because it's um it's a bit tight in there to be honest like there's, again it's supposed to be using this kind of airlock door thing but it's a very tight space for a person to get in and then close the door behind them <laughs> but never mind uh yeah so just but but i thought it just kind of adds again it adds a bit of um a bit of rally i suppose i could actually have added a habitat door but um yeah i just thought this worked a bit it's just something simple just to add to it um yeah it's not you got the structure's not got the roof on at the moment but we'll see we'll add the roof in a minute um, I did a bunch of lighting. I think you've seen that. What else did I do to this? Um, those butterflies are really cool. So I see the scale um, of the birds and stuff. Oh, I should definitely mention as well. So these birds are not mine. Uh, I didn't create these. Someone far, far better with the art shapes has created these. Um, I can't actually remember the name, but and that's awful. But there's a couple of different creators that created these. Mostly one person. Um, but what I have done is uh, there is it will be a link in the description of this video uh, for all of the blueprints. So I've made a collection, which is just easier um, for everybody that you can go and look at the collection. That will have all my my things that I've put up on the workshop for this dome, and then any um, bits and pieces that I've uh, that I've used. So that parrot in the background, for example, is all a piece that. I've taken from the workshop um, and there are a few pieces that I've quite a few pieces that I've created but um, I take I tend to take so long on these episodes um, yeah I'd love to get into a position where I'm editing these and having them ready early but I've just I kind of always just end up filling and changing stuff and you see I'm not massively jumping forwards every time but I kind of rather work on the detailing so yeah just Come into the end here of the speed builds as I'm creating this roof piece. Um, so stick around and there'll be some real time section very shortly.
Okay, peeps. So let's give you the the real time tour. So I've got a load of guests in at the moment. So um, because I'm kind of just trying to see what it looks like with people pathing around, but uh, so they're probably dropping the FPS a little bit. I very much limited the um, the number of guests so far. So still loads to do. Still nothing in this this lobby. And then we'll just nip through this set of doors first. Um, go very slowly for some reason, but we'll just nip through this this set of doors and show you some of the detailing. Just done a little bit more extra detail in here, so double doors again. Uh, have we got any monkeys in there? Yeah, so a couple of monkeys hanging out in there. So yeah, just a couple of like bits of detailing on the ceilings and things. So I added these little um, kind of supposed to be like swipe card door release things oh there's people coming through here now I'm not sure where you're going um put these down I saw these actually on a on a real photograph that of um can't remember which it was but these kind of little things that um they're supposed to be like just paperwork for them for the animals that are in the habitat uh yeah so I think I had a bunch of this stuff in here before but just a bit of extra detail in um, what else have I done? I've done some stuff in this, actually inside this. Uh, so I did this little like interior dividing door in. Uh, I think those doors up there weren't here in the last episode as well. Oh, that monkey just came straight through that wall. Interesting. Not sure he was outside or not, but yeah. So I did these little dividing doors, and then let's whiz back up full speed. Go back into the actual into the dome. Still love that. Still love that effect up there. Just that view is awesome. So sort of looking up. So we've got music as we come in. I don't think I've done anything new on the left. Oh, I think I talked about this in the last. I just added this sign in. I talked about this in the last episode. Oh, there's a monkey interesting i have had a few i have to say i had i've had a few pathing issues they're not escaping from the tunnels but they are escaping um by climbing around the bamboo i think they found pathing as updated or something but yeah put this little side in an umbrella i guess you get pooped on i've never actually seen it happen yet though um let's just see if we can zoop through this wall yeah, so inside the habitat, I have done a few changes in here. I did I changed this little climbing structure up um, after actually watching Rudy's video um, about the uh, he did a a guide on the um, animations and things. So just to cut oh, the traversable area, it's really good. I still do do some weird stuff, but like that one just moonwalked all the way across there. Explain that one, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> it just went all the way backwards. I know it's coming back again. I have no idea. But yes, yeah, so I know they've got access to this um, this island. I'm trying to get them into this tree, but it's a struggle. There's a lot of... This is a big custom tree I made. Put all sorts of stuff together. Um, so it's a bit of a struggle to get them through that. But maybe we'll get there. So yeah, just I'm going to use this. This is how I'm going to divide up the, the pool. Uh, so this is obviously this... Um, this side of the habitat. I think they do swim, or you do see them in and out of the water, but I made sure I put some some little ramps and things in there for them. So let's carry on this way. And then we'll go into the bulk of the new stuff. So if you listen... I'll try and shut up for a second. So that's what I was talking about in the uh in the speed build there is just trying to get the ambience right so here's our new section and the shadows are a bit funny as i said I'm trying to trying to try and avoid getting too many shadows in here and this is a this is a uh i think pond shrimp created this, this is a workshop item again it'll be linked in the will be in the collection so here's our little game thing i think it kind of I think it kind of works so you stand in the middle 
um, and the blue marker is the three meter mark. So this is actually three meters, or two meters in, in the speed bill. But so this is basically saying, yeah, can you out jump the monkey? You stand in the middle and jump out, and you see how far you get. Obviously, you won't get three meters. But and there's our new wall. So I think this works better than the last one. If you remember from the last episode, I just had a rock, basic rock wall structure there. I see they clip through the steps annoyingly, but. Oh, I can go up the steps. Yeah, kind of cool little view through. And then if we just carry on down this way, so there's the door into the side of the of the habitat. I put a little gate on here. So this is our steps down into the pool. And then yeah, here's our dudes. So I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Again, it sounds good in here. I'm starting to struggle a little bit with this glass. I feel like this glass is annoying me, but I think I'm just going to have to accept that. And then, yeah, there's the view down, down the dome. It's going to be so cool once we've got all this filled out. Um, yes, yeah, so put these little benches in. Just some bits and pieces. We've got lighting in here. So let's just actually, just so we come to the end there, guys. So we'll just give you the night version. So it's pretty, pretty basic lighting in this section so far. I think maybe I need a bit more lighting for the path and things. But yeah, just some kind of little bits of lighting. Still do love that view, the lights up there. So yes, um, thank you very much for watching guys. As I said, I will be um, just adding a little bit of footage on at the end of the video just to talk through how I made this wall. Um, it's super simple, but yeah, I've had a few people ask me. Um, so thank you very much for watching. My name is Toves, and I shall catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Okay, so if you're still here, you're looking to do to work out how to do this. Uh, uh, so I'm over in my little bit. This is kind of my my zoo palette. Um, so these are all my kind of working um, ideas and bits and pieces. So I'll show you briefly how to do this. It's very simple. It's a lot simpler than people think it is. Um, so there is a piece that's critical to this, which is the New World Sign Editable Wave. So all I did was get this. Uh, Flip it around that way, duplicate it, make sure that I can line up the that wave section there. And then all I'm doing after that is getting, so I take that piece, excuse the clicks here guys, because there will be clicks from my mouse and my keyboard. Um, and then I flip that, so I've duplicated those two pieces now, flip those over rotate them around the other way. So you could have that effect as a view, um, but I actually went with the wave effect. So what I did was just, again, get a third one. And you could obviously make this as big as you want um, and continue that kind of effect on. What you end up with, as you can see here, is you do end up with these overlapping pieces um, so you'll need to find a way of hiding these ends because obviously you don't want, you can't get it to uh, to just end on this. There's not a narrower piece. So then the next step is the is the is the time consuming bit, which is basically just getting the thin planks. Uh, let's not do that actually. Let's go thin and let's do that. And then you. You're basically just following the line. So this is the bit that takes the time. Is you just line up the edge of the the plank with the edge of the, the wave. Doing this very roughly. And then you just keep doing that, basically repeat that across the whole thing. All you need to do though is you don't need to go across the whole thing um, every piece. You just need to go across this first wave section. 
So what you'll end up with is, if I just do, I'll just do it a little bit and then show you what I mean. Um, you'll end up with a template piece. So if I, I've selected that whole, where's my, where's my markers gone there? You'll end up with a, with a, a template piece that you can then reuse across the whole wave. So what I want to make sure I'm doing is I'm putting this on the on the other side as well. So it doesn't need to be exact because you can go back and you know fiddle with these later. And yeah, you, know, you get by the fact that they're quite a small piece, you get away with quite a lot in the inaccuracies of, of lining them up and spacing them and all that sort of stuff. So we'll just do that for now. And then all I need to do is as I know roughly what my my grid, my shape's going to be, or my pattern's going to be, take these out, and then I just duplicate that whole, sorry, duplicate that whole section, that whole section. It looks like we've got something overlapping there. Oh, I've got, I see. One second. So we've got too many groups going on there. So then we're going to just basically pull those repeating tiled pieces so that's the key bit so you only really need to create one you need to do it on both sides the reason why you need to do it on both sides is because there'll be you know times in the pattern when you actually need it you need it the other way around so if you want to do the top section here's okay but you might need you might end up needing that way you see what i mean and that's it so obviously, if you imagine you repeated that the whole time. Oh, the only other thing I did was, and um, it's quite important, I think, to do for for wood is you see me quite often in speed builds doing more than one tone. So that's not all just a flat grey. I've gone back and made sure that you know, I've got more than one different. So you see that's a light colour compared to that. Just gives it a bit more interest and a bit more detail. All right, guys, hope that made sense. Um, do let me know if there's anything else you want me to go through or explain. I'm always happy to do these little bits on the end of the videos. Thank you very much for watching um, and I appreciate you being here to the end. So yeah, take it easy. See you next time.